So if you've clicked on this video, I would imagine you've probably encountered this photo during your time here on the internet. This is the infamous picture of American dentist Walter Palmer, the man on the left, posing next to a lion he had recently hunted. That lion would become known to the world as Cecil the Lion. It's important to note that trophy hunting, which is essentially what Walter Palmer was participating in here, is perfectly legal in many countries around the world. As long as you have the proper permits and the ethical hunting protocols are followed, trophy hunting is perfectly okay. But the legality of this particular hunt would be called into question when some disturbing evidence and first-hand accounts of this situation came forward. This would result in the killing of Cecil the Lion to become a worldwide news story and led to a mob of targeted harassment towards Walter Palmer. This is going to be a wild ride, so fasten up your seatbelts. We're going to go ahead and talk about the real story behind Cecil the Lion. To lay the foundation for this story, we really need to get to know the big cat himself, Cecil the Lion. Cecil was born sometime in 2002 in Zimbabwe's Wenge National Park, the park being a wildlife reserve where hunting was extremely limited. Cecil would thrive within the park, becoming the most dominant and recognized lion within its borders. Part of why he was so recognizable was because of his signature black tinged mane. In 2008, he was tagged with a radio tracking collar by one of the park's rangers, a man named Brent Staplecamp. This allowed rangers to keep track of Cecil's movements and monitor his whereabouts. Cecil had become somewhat of a legend within the park to the point where tourists would travel to Wange in the hopes of an encounter with Cecil. The lion had inadvertently become the mascot of the park and was generally beloved by the rangers and visitors alike. In Wange National Park, Cecil was king and would live in prosperity within its borders for over 13 years, but no king rules forever, my son. Because in 2015, American dentist Walter Palmer had planned to make his way to Zimbabwe for a hunt, and he was looking to bag a lion. So let's get to know a little bit about Walter Palmer here. Walter Palmer practiced dentistry out of Bloomington, Minnesota, and when he wasn't fixing teeth, he was hunting big game. Palmer was a recreational trophy hunter. Bears, elks, rams, jaguars, you name it, the guy liked to hunt exotic wild animals for sport. And before we even get into his encounter with Cecil the Lion, we need to take a look back at this guy's hunting history because there was a time in 2006 where he was facing criminal charges for a botched black bear hunt. In 2006, Palmer allegedly killed a bear in a county that he did not have hunting permits for and had given false and misleading statements to federal agents while under investigation for the botched hunt. Palmer pled guilty in 2008 to making these false statements to the federal agents and paid a $3,000 fine. Fast forward to July of 2015 where Walter Palmer had planned to make this hunting expedition to Zimbabwe. Walter Palmer reportedly pays a sum of $55,000 between his guide Theo Bronkhurst and a local landowner to hunt game within the landowner's property. The private land that Walter Palmer would be hunting on is adjacent to Cecil the Lion's home of Wange Park. The only thing dividing it was a rail line. Walter Palmer and his hunting guide, to their knowledge, had acquired the proper permits and would travel to Zimbabwe to begin their hunt. On July 1st, using a compound bow, Walter Palmer would kill Cecil the Lion, who had wandered across the tracks outside of the park and landed in some private property. He took a picture with the lion, posted it online, and went viral, and the world got outraged. End of story, right? Wrong. That's not the end of this story at all. To really understand how controversial and bizarre this case was, we really have to dive into the finer details. And keep in mind, some of these details came out several months later. But to avoid time jumps, I'm going to go ahead and tell the story with the fullest amount of detail right here. As Walter Palmer was hunting with his guide Theo Bronkhurst on July 1st, they had come across Cecil the Lion, but Cecil was reportedly within the borders of Wange National Park, where it was illegal to shoot him. So in order to lure him onto the private property that they had got permits for, the hunting party allegedly used a tactic of baiting, where they dragged an elephant carcass behind a vehicle to lure Cecil onto the property. It was on the private property where Palmer shot Cecil with his compound bow. 
The animal would bleed out over several hours and the hunters would eventually finish him off with a second shot after stalking Cecil. After Cecil was killed, the hunters beheaded the lion and skinned him taking the head and the hide as trophies. They had also allegedly removed the tracking collar on Cecil and had placed it on a nearby tree. Brent Staplecamp, the one who had put the tracking collar on Cecil all those years ago, claims that the hunters had not attempted to contact the park or authorities after realizing they had killed an animal which was part of a research study, which to any logical person would be obvious upon seeing the collar. Post hunt, Walter Palmer would return back to the United States and it wouldn't be long before rangers discovered Cecil's corpse and the killing of the beloved lion would make national headlines. The infamous photo of Palmer standing next to Cecil's dead body went viral on the internet and also was being plastered on news reports worldwide. Not only was the morality of trophy hunting brought into the public discussion, there was also plenty of debate around if what Walter Palmer and his guides did was it even legal. With these two things in mind, you gotta imagine Walter Palmer was definitely getting plenty of harassment, a lot of it being sourced from online. Walter Palmer would find his dentistry business under fire with negative Yelp reviews, hit pieces being made about him, and and death threats thrown at him, of course. His public statement after the story blew up was directed to the patients of his dentistry, and here's that statement. I deeply regret that my pursuit of an activity I love and practice responsibly and legally resulted in the taking of this line. That was never my intention. The media interest in this matter, along with a substantial number of comments and calls from people who are angered by this situation and by the practice of hunting in general, has disrupted our business and our ability to see our patients. For that disruption, I apologize profoundly for this inconvenience and promise you that we will do our best to resume normal operations as soon as possible. We are working to have patients with immediate needs refer to other dentists and will keep you informed of any additional developments. On behalf of all of us at River Bluff Dental, thank you for your support. Clearly Walter Palmer was feeling some of this heat coming towards his way. And like I said previously, a lot of this was online and you know it's coming from Twitter. Here are some popular tweets from that time that embody the outrage which was being directed at Trophy Hunting and him. On Twitter, hashtag justice for Cecil was the flavor of the hour. If you hunt lions, it does not make you brave. It makes you a coward. My heart aches for Cecil. Arnold Schwarzenegger, these are trophies. This is not. We got Ellen here. The story of Cecil the Lion is devastating. I hope everyone is as outraged as I am and it turns into a commitment to change. Animals deserve better. And then you got this statement from PETA. Hunting is a coward's pastime. If as has been reported, the dentist and his guides lured Cecil out of the park with food, as so to shoot him on private property because shooting him in the park would have been illegal, he needs to be extradited, charged, and preferably hanged. People were generally not a big fan of this Walter Palmer guy, even if what he did wasn't necessarily considered illegal. He pretty much embodied that ignorant, uncaring, wealthy American who just because he can will travel to Zimbabwe and trophy hunt a lion. It's definitely the person who committed the deed that more so outraged people, not the fact that Cecil died. Yes, of course, that is very sad, but could you imagine this much outrage if it was a group of Zimbabwe native poachers who killed Cecil? I don't think it would be the same story. Petitions would be created hoping to extradite Palmer back to Zimbabwe so he could face legal actions. Some of these would gain over 1 million signatures, but for the time being, Palmer was legally in the clear. So I'm sure in this story you're expecting somehow a lawsuit gets brought into the mix and surely it would be directed at Walter Palmer, but it actually wasn't. The person that would be under fire legally would be the guide of the hunt, Theo Bronkhurst. Theo Bronkhurst, after all being the guide for the hunt, was responsible for ensuring that it was carried out ethically and it didn't break any laws. It was because of this that the Zimbabwean government was charging Bronkhurst with the allowance of an illegal hunt. And while on paper this seems like a slam dunk case, you know, Walter Palmer and his guide used some highly questionable hunting tactics involving baiting to lure Cecil out of the park onto private property, but it really wasn't that simple in a court setting. The problem was what they did may have been unethical and morally wrong, there was no specific law that stated what they did was illegal. 
and the alleged baiting strategy wasn't an uncommon method, and from what I can tell there wasn't any specific ordinance that forbade them from killing an animal that crossed from a park to private land. Due to a technicality, Cecil had become fair game for the hunters. Ultimately, the charges from the Zimbabwean government against Bronkhurst were dropped. The Zimbabwean court ruled that the charges, quote, were too vague to enable him to mount a proper defense. As far as the courts were concerned, Walter Palmer and his hunting party had the proper permits to kill a lion on private property, and that's exactly what happened. Nobody would face any jail time in this situation. Well, many people in this case feel like Cecil the Lion never got justice because Walter Palmer and those involved in the hunt were never locked up or anything. There were some changes in trophy hunting laws across the world that in a way, I guess you could say, were because of this Cecil the Lion event. Some countries stopped allowing trophy hunting contraband such as animal skins and hides to be trafficked through their borders. The United States, who was the biggest importer of lion trophies added new protection for lions under the Endangered Species Act. And Zimbabwe? Well, it banned trophy hunting for 10 days and then reinstated it, so... <laughs> Uh, I guess everybody else was trying to be progressive in Zimbabwe, not so much. And what about old Walter Palmer? Well, he still practices dentistry to this day. What do you guys think about this Cecil the Lion story though? Do you remember when this was going down and do you remember the vicious outrage camp that was on Twitter trying to basically hunt down this man? Let me know in the comments what you think. And I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys for being super homie. We got a $10 shout out right here. It's your boy. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.